Welcome to Kinky Knots Cafe's Proactive is the Way. Proactive is the Way is a podcast brought to you by two sisters who dove into the health and wellness industry, one plan and the other by fate. We have joined forces to bring to you authentic conversations about our personal experiences as it relates to managing our health, working within the industry, and taking our combined knowledge to share with you some golden nuggets that you can take with you to live the best version of you. Over the next year, we will host two episodes a month, and each month we will focus on a topic that is designed to increase an awareness of tools and resources to enhance an aspect of your mind, body, and spirit. Our topic this month, Atomic Habits addictions, fixations, tendency, weakness, enslavement, custom. No matter what you call it, the good and the bad, we all got them. Do you know what your habits are? Most of us don't really identify the behaviors we have as a habit. Typically, these behaviors that we develop start off small, shaping and molding itself in obscurity until one day we find that it has grown into something that is either quite unmanageable and burdensome, or it could be one that you have developed, which provides you an infinite amount of success. All right, so let's start off. We'll we'll define habit and then we'll get into giving you some examples using our lives, some examples of daily habits. So habit, what is it? It is a, a tendency or practice that is easy to do, difficult to give up, and it ultimately shapes or defines who you are. So Tiffany, can you give me some examples of habits or some examples of your daily habits? My daily habits, you know, actually um, are intentional, are purposeful. Um, I I try um, to be very deliberate about what I do daily. Um, and this has just come over, um, from years of, um, just being disciplined and craving discipline. Right. So daily in the morning when I wake up and I've been doing this consistently for about a year now, and I would have to say it, 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 it evolved. Um, I wake up, um, first off, let me say I'm not on social media. Um, so it's it's easier for me to do this because what I was doing before when I would wake up is checking social media. Now what I do when I wake up is I check my calm app. Um, and I start my, I start my day with meditation. Mm-hmm. Now I already told you this morning, I've been up since about two 30. So I have not, uh, done my meditation this morning cause I got off but um, that's my that's my primary habit is to get up and start my day with a word. Um, um, then the next thing I do is I check some things about my health. Um, I check daily um, in the morning <clears throat> my blood pressure and I check my sugars and I keep a log of that. That might just be my nursing brain, <laughs> nurse practitioner brain. Right. Um, um, and then before um, I get out of bed, um, you know, uh, reading um, the book, The Secret by uh, Linda Byrne, um, I try to be conscious to plant my feet um, saying thank and then you, um, you know, as I get out of the bed, I try to remember myself. And even if I don't remember when I when I get out of the bed, if it, whenever it pops in my brain, I, I make sure I pick my foot up and I say, hey, thank you 
Yeah. Love that gratitude. Okay. Yeah, gratitude because I don't think we have enough of that. Or not that we don't have enough of it, but we don't acknowledge um the way that we should or take the time to. Mm -hmm. Um, and then as I go on about my day, um, you know, habits you kind of do uh subconsciously um when it's a habit, it's been something you've been doing uh for a long time. Um I take care of my, you know, from hygiene to preparing my my bag for work. Um, if I decide I'm gonna take lunch or not for that day, but right now I'm on a on a uh, travel contract, so I've been um, eating out healthy foods, um, but I've been eating out, um, so I haven't been taking. What about you? What what kind of habits do you? Yeah, just from a personal perspective, um, it was quite interesting. Something that I I realized is that my habits are have been formed over some time, you know, mm -hmm. and we don't necessarily think of them as habits, but I noticed that, you know, I do the same thing. I get up in the morning, I hit snooze. <laughs> <laughs> do you I mean like clockwork hit snooze I open my eyes I hit snooze again two times I hit snooze yeah <laughs> and then after I get up finally and I am on social media and so I have this tendency to start trying to see if there is anything I can identify within social media that would help me within my day so I do take a strategic approach. I don't try to watch a whole bunch of garbage. Mm -hmm. Now, every now and again, something will catch your eye, right? Or catch my eye. Um, but I will be on social media and try to pinpoint articles that I can read. Uh, or I will go to uh, Apple News and see what articles are displayed or news, um, my news app to see what articles are available to read. Mm -hmm. And then right after that, I'm getting myself, I have a regimen that I do to prepare for my workout. You know, I put on my, my body creams and I get ready for my workout. And because my day is pretty consistent due to having children, right? With children, consistency is so important. I after my workout, I'm getting them up and doing the daily duties, getting them up, going downstairs, fixing breakfast, preparing their classroom for their virtual learning environment, making sure that they themselves get up and that they start their workout. And then as I'm preparing breakfast, I'm calling them down so that they can start their day serving breakfast. I mean, you know, the mommy things. And so this is like an everyday occurrence. And after I'm off to work and between work, you know, I'm still working out. I work out, I come back and prepare lunch, go back to work where I can find time, work out, et cetera, again. Uh, and so it's actually, it's actually just what I do on a daily basis that I necessarily did not think of as a habit, but it is habitual in nature, right? Mm -hmm. And, you know, when we talk about habits, uh, I know right now we're, we're referencing daily habits, but I want to make sure that we are also being mindful of other habits that exist out there, right? Um, such as uh, sex addiction or mm -hmm. drugs and alcohol, uh, or even being a racist is a habit. Mm. And I was thinking about this. I think I sent you a text last night or an email. And I was like, oh, these two, these two ideas just popped in my head. Um, and it was about how these habits form, which is what we're going to be talking about over the next month, right? How do these habits form? And how our mind plays into forming these habits. And so I think I sent over to you, I was like, Tiff, you know, what are the viewpoints on your thoughts about the power of the mind? 
the power mm -hmm. of the mind and how our mind through our thoughts, through our preconceived notions, help us to formulate habits. Mm -hmm. Our mind works on a loop, right? We're constantly um, receiving information, constantly receiving information, and then your mind keeps working on a loop. And then that's when you have all this, this feedback. Um, the mind is um, extremely um, powerful, which is why um, with information, you have to be careful about um, the type of information that you are feeding your mind, right? Mm -hmm. Especially when it comes to habits and you and you mentioned like uh, the different types of addiction, um, some of the negative things that 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 happen um, out of the um, development, well, for uh, a better term, bad habits, how bad habits um, develop. Mm -hmm. um, but um, the mind works on a loop. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, reading, um, it's got me real interested in neuroscience, but I'll discuss that with you um, later mm -hmm. because I didn't really um, think of it um, from that. Like my brain has been so like tunnel vision for, you know, um, just medicine and um, the theory surrounding neuroscience and how our brain um, works. but. I won't, I won't delve off into that. Mm -hmm. What the, the mind is powerful and the mind is powerful um, because of what we feed it and what we repeat mm -hmm. to our, mm -hmm. so Absolutely. repetition. Yeah. Yeah. And when you say, when you say that it, it's in a loop, I want to make sure that I have a good understanding, not in a loop per se that, you know, you are stuck in thought, but in a loop in terms of the process of the mind. And right. it takes in information, it digests that information, it analyzes the information that has that has been presented to it, and then it formulates a decision, right? It helps you to formulate a decision based on the information that it's that it's right receive mm -hmm. right okay yeah I mean I just I was thinking about that I was like wow the mind is just so powerful right we take all these different things that our mind has the capability to do right our and I'm going to open Pandora's box here because I think it's so important that people are aware that we have these telekinetic powers we do we yeah. have telepathy within no, our we Absolutely. I totally believe in that because you can be totally thinking about someone so much so, and then surprise, they're calling you and you're like, well, wait a minute. Exactly. That, that well, has to be more than coincidence. It is. It is. It is. It is actually, it's a part of our, and you stated with neuroscience, it's a part of our brain and how our brain operates. And before we had language, right? I could only imagine how powerful, more powerful our brain was, right? Cognition, intuition. We even had the ability to control animals, right? We don't think about that. There's a whole population. Indigenous people still have the capabilities to do that, right? They foresight, all these different things that our mind has the ability to do. And something as simple as developing or or removing a habit in our day to day has become such a complicated process. Mm -hmm. And I just, I was thinking about that when it popped in my head and I was like, oh my goodness, the power of the mind. I had brought up a little bit earlier about, you know, even with racism, right? And I talk, I talk all the time about this and it's not to be rude or to be mean, mm -hmm. but even the idea of being a racist is is a habitual is a habitual behavior okay. at a particular you maybe you grew up in a, a certain background or you had a, a you know a particular upbringing or you had a particular encounter right that that whether it be good or bad but that encounter impacted you in some sort of way. Mm 
And now because of that encounter or because of your upbringing, you've developed a habit to have a preconceived notion about someone based on their ethnicity. And so I just thought about that and I was like, wow, you know, our mind is so powerful and we have to be very mindful that when we are talking about this particular subject over the next month, how our mind plays into developing habits, good and bad habits. Let's make sure we're clear on that. We don't want right. to be about bad habits, bad habits, because there are good habits that are out there. So let's get right. back to the daily habits. What were some ahas that you noticed about your habits? Wow. Um, I had a lot of aha moments, um, but what I noticed about me and, and actually, um, I like that we have out here all of these um, these thought leaders who who put it into better words for us. But I realized um, that my bad habits were a result of me, or my bad habits have come as a result of me being bored, mm -hmm. pure boredom. Um, with the repetition of doing things, I've noticed that, um, like when I'm at the gym that, um, I can't, um, sometimes I can't finish a workout because I'm so bored with the repetitions mm -hmm. of the workout and I already know what comes next. Mm -hmm. Um, but the thing is, is that if you want to, develop good habits and you want to develop and be successful and be who you want to be you have to experience a certain amount of boredom mm -hmm. so I think that that was a aha moment for me as far as like trying to evaluate like I have so much discipline I can stay or I thought I was so focused mm -hmm. but um I have some terrible habits you know like just thinking of the, and why do we always gravitate towards talking about when you talk about a habit, you automatically go to the bad habits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's never like the, the good habits. Right. Well, we, I just think that what happens is we don't realize whether it be good or bad, that these are habits, you know, mm -hmm. I, when, when I was going through this process and uh, a part of, and so we're, we're talking about atomic habits. We're talking about atomic habits. Um, you know, the, the book, an easy and proven way to build good habits and break bad ones with James clear in the book, there's an exercise that he has us do where he has us identify our daily habits. And, and one of the things that I realized was that I'm quite habitual right? I'm quite habitual, but I never looked at my day-to-day -day as a habit. I don't recognize them as a habit. Uh -huh. And because it's just a part of what I do or something that I have to do because of my environment, I just, I just thought it was me, right? I just thought it was me. And when I wrote down all of the things that I do, I will tell you, I asked you the question about what were some ahas was that I really, I work out a lot. <laughs> I probably work out excessively and I didn't realize it. I work out, Tiffany, about five to seven times a day. And what I mean by that is five to seven times a day, I focus my intention on moving my intention on moving. I will lift weights or perform some sort of calisthenics. I would do a yoga session, jump on the treadmill, jump on the bike. And I'm always moving with intention that I think. Well, was how much is that? How much of that is a habit versus obsession? Right. That's going to be. A or, a, or a compulsion. Right. That's a great, that's a great question. I don't know. I, I look at it as 
a good habit, primarily because it wasn't something that I was accustomed to doing before. What has happened, what I realized is that I have trained my mind to make use of idle time. Because as you know, an idle mind is the devil's playground. And so when, when I have downtime, I have the capabilities, I find something to do that is constructive or that I find to be constructive. And, and you then, found exercise to be the most um, constructive Exactly. Form and, of, of a, a, a space filler. Exactly. Or time filler, I should say. And it is a time filler because when I exercise, I flex on two levels. I flex mentally and I flex physically. Oh, I like as, that. As I shared in our first episode, I have a habit of reading while working out. Oh, Right. And so, you know, I also found in this particular um, <laughs> exercise is that I do enjoy most of my habits. And when I, I don't do them at, you know, my designated time, I will make it up at some point within my day. I am constantly negotiating with myself to get them done. You know, and it's it's just quite interesting. Those those were a couple of the ahas. Mm -hmm. So talk. Talk to me. So you found some ahas. Did, did you find that you had developed within some of the habits that within some of the habits that you have, did you find that you had any negative beliefs about yourself? And if so, can you share with me some of the beliefs that you found, things that might be possibly deeply rooted? And how have these beliefs impacted or affected your habit formation? You know, um, I, I feel like, um, I had image issues, um, from a very young age because of how much I was teased, you know, they call it bullying today, but it wasn't bullying when I, when I encountered it, mm -hmm. um, which still kind of frustrates me. I'm like, well, wait a minute. How did this word, word bully evolve? And it wasn't bullying when I was, you know, suffering in um, school, trying to find my, you know, identity. And I had, you know, people challenging me all along the way, calling me names. I would be just like the butt of jokes, you know, for no reason. Like don't even have to open my mouth, but here I am. Mm -hmm. um, I could tell you very specific examples. I won't go into that. <laughs> oh, I, I know because it used to bother me. They, I remember they used to call you Osti. And <laughs> I, was, part, I didn't really care about, I didn't really care about the nickname. Well, it, all, it all played into your look though, because you were very yeah. thin and tall. <laughs> and, but I thought you were beautiful. And I was like, how did they call, are you talking about like an Osti? Or, <laughs> yeah. well, like osteoporosis no like no like yeah so but yeah no like I didn't, I didn't think that one was the meanest one like I got called some pretty weird stuff but mm -hmm. anyway um mean and weird uh but no I had uh image issues and I think um because of how we were raised, you know, with our parents and, you know, how daddy was, we don't, I mean, mm -hmm. they didn't, they were, I, I feel like our parents were supportive. And so I don't, I, and I don't know how you feel about that, but I feel like our parents were supportive to the point, um, especially our, especially our dad, mommy too. Let me just, mommy. Well, they supportive. wanted the best for us based on their upbringing or what they knew or how to be as a parent. Right. 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 And you know, their history because they didn't have parents. So they had this, they, they had a, a better way. Right. Um, but yeah, so, um, you know, um, with the image issues, but with the support of my family, I feel like, um, I drew on a strength, um, to develop habits that were going to somehow promote my sense of safety, my sense of well-being, um, because I could see the bigger picture in a sense. 
Mm-hmm. I kind of think I have. I think I had a, a, a old soul and a and a new soul. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, possibly. I think, I, I think I'm kind of um, duplicitous on that, but um, I kind of knew some things mm-hmm. um, and how things um, would eventually evolve for me. And some of it has come to fruition, but mm-hmm. um, yeah. And so in terms of affecting your habit formation, Mm -hmm. how did those beliefs affect you in forming good and bad habits? Well, I'll tell you, um, forming good habits, um, like working out. um, Now, I definitely do not work out as much as you do. Um, <laughs> and lately I haven't even made the effort because, you know, I don't, I have gym, you know, I, my second bedroom is my gym at home, but, um, uh, here in the, in this, uh, extended stay, I don't have, um, the option. I have to leave. So that if I leave, then I got to come back and take a shower. I'm, and I'm just making excuses because I can do all of that. I've done it before. I used to get up at 4 a.m. every morning, like clockwork. I'm going to the gym. I'm working out two hours. I mean, I was I was looking the best I ever looked. I even had somebody challenge me on uh, Facebook. Like, well, how do you look like that? What are you out there doing? Nothing. <laughs> working out. And um, well... So- but anyway, <laughs> but anyway, um, but that was that was before, mm-hmm. um, um, but yeah, no. So I developed. I I believe I developed um certain habits as a means of distraction mm-hmm. to distract, like um, you know, the. I wouldn't call it pain, but just like, I I, th- I just think it was like, um, you develop certain habits. Mine was driven by experiences, negative experiences. My good habits, I feel like were driven by negative experience I have encountered mm-hmm. along the way, if that makes sense. Oh, no, absolutely. Absolutely. I, I would tell you for, for me, I, I struggled with this, this particular question. Um, you know, trying to, or attempting to find something negative, a belief that I've, I've created that was negative about myself. And I think it's because number one, I've always been kind of an introvert, right? And so being an introvert, I'm borderline introvert slash extrovert, because I can talk to anyone and anyone. I have the capabilities to be in any type of setting, et cetera, but I'm really balanced in that sense. But if you understand the behavior or the characteristic of an introvert, we we get our energy from within. We don't need external energy to drive us, to move us, right? And so one of the things that I did over the years was I've always practiced self-love and showing myself grace because so Ooh, people, I like that right so many people are out there beating you up I'm like well why would I beat myself up you're doing it for you me you beat you and then you beat I don't up. that I definitely don't need to do because you're doing it for me so I'm I just gonna, learned that this year I just you. learned that this year about giving yourself grace and that you know what that actually comes um during my meditation it um, is so important Tiffany you mm-hmm. know because when you show yourself grace, you're able to overcome anything. You understand, you have this understanding that life is a journey, as you mentioned la- you know, a couple of weeks ago in our last podcast. Life is a journey, it's not a destination. And so in that journey, you're going to have ebb and flows. Mm-hmm. Everything is, it's not going to be a straight shot from point A to point B, right? And not that, not because of you, but because of the environment. And so it's so important that we learn to show ourselves a level of, of grace. Um, so much so that it becomes very difficult for any type of negative belief to settle in. Now, I, I do believe that I have areas of development. I have um, things that yeah, I do. Absolutely. Right. Awesome. But, 
but I look at it as just that, right? It's an opportunity to make myself better. And what is it that I can do to help improve? So, and I'll give you an example. Can I mm-hmm. give you an example? Give me an example. I used to always eat for taste. And now you eat for nutrition. Bingo. You sound, you sound like daddy, Toya. And- if I'm going, if I want to eat tacos, I'm sorry, I'm eating me some tacos. No. I don't care. I'm eating for taste. Yeah. I love food. But but eating for taste, and actually, I got this concept, believe it or not, from my ex husband. He used to say to me all the time, "Why do you eat like that?" Meanwhile, I'm steady eating some taste. Some taste because for some- it's a habit, right? I, I developed a habit. <laughs> Taste, one taste, right? And now I formulated, right? I've reformulated that habit. And now I eat for nourishment, Mm -hmm. right? I eat because my body tells me, oh, it's time to eat. It's time to break your fast. Oh, it's time for you to hydrate yourself. And now I listen to my body more. Mm -hmm. And I think by doing that, I've become more in tune with hearing my body Oh. Thus, anytime I need to make changes or uh, begin to develop something different that helps to heal myself, mm-hmm. here it telling me what I need to do, right? Mm-hmm. And so as it relates to habit formation, you know, and uh, going back to the question, right, ha- habit formation, what I've realized is that in order for me to form a habit, because now I'm really in tune with my body, I'm in tune with my mind, I'm in tune with my spirit, I don't mind taking my time. I don't mind breaking down the process to create a new habit. To make sure that it's attainable, I break it down. In addition, I'm a, I'm a bit progressive and how I manage myself, which means I I find that it, I'm pretty good at shifting and being able to move forward, not permitting preconceived notions or my upbringing to get in the way of my growth. Right. That's powerful. Yeah. Yeah. So so let me ask you this prior to the knowledge that you acquired. Okay. To you, prior to the knowledge that you acquired from this book, can you tell me how have you overcome the challenges of habit formation? The challenges of habit formation, mm. more specifically, like um, the process it took you in order to change a habit. So previously, all you, the process it, that it, it took was, me to change a habit. Yeah. Previously, you said, "Hey." you know, normally when I start my process, it's because someone has brought something to my attention, right? They, they talked about my image. And so I decided I need to do this, right? Mm -hmm. So your habit at that moment in time was formulated based on someone's perception of you. Right. Right. So, so, um, to answer that question, um, I think, uh, pre, um, knowledge, uh, prior to, um, even delving into this, um, book, um, I learned, um, really honestly from, from school. Mm -hmm. I can remember back in, um, high school when you used to come to class and the, there would be a box by the door at the start of the year, they would tell you, Hey, write down all your stuff, all your negativities and throw it in that box or that trash can Mm -hmm. by the door. Cause we're not going to start the year. We're not going to start the day. So it may have been a daily box and it just depends what class you were in. May have been a daily box, may have been a, been a yearly trash can. (laughs) I don't know, Mm -hmm. but you threw it there at the door. So you got into the habit of being positive when you came through the door so that you could have a productive day. I like that. Yeah. So pre all of, you know, reading, 
um, pre James Clear, I actually knew he just put it in better word, better terms mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that that's pretty interesting that you said that because I said that too. I was like, you know, James really broke down how I manage habit formation, and I really appreciate that because I never. Honestly, Tiff, I never thought about it to be quite honest. Because as I mentioned earlier, you don't, you don't. And he even says that you don't, right? You just don't think about it. You don't think that these things are habitual in nature. You just think that this is just who I am. This is just mm -hmm. what I do, right? He says he even says you do the same thing at the same time every day. From mm -hmm. putting on your shoes, you're putting on the same shoe at the same time. You're probably tying the right shoe before you tie, tie the left yes. shoe. Like, we yeah. do a lot of things, and it, I think it's automatic. Mess, how do you say that word? Automacity, autom I'm just well. automatic. <laughs> automatic. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's just it's something. yeah, uh, it, it's just automatic. Um, but for me, you know, prior to this book, how I've always overcome any challenge to forming a habit was that I break it down. I break it down in bite size. Did you deliberately break it down though? Or you're saying, or you, you just know that you've always broken it down. You weren't That's deliberate true. about it. That, that was just something no. that yeah, you have formulated independently just, in, in your mind. In my mind, I had to break it down. Mm -hmm. I had to, I had to break it down so that it was easier to digest, um, easier to attain what I was trying to formulate. And I will tell you something, I was breaking things down. I'm not saying like certain things I move fast on certain things, I move a little bit more slowly, right? Um, but as I mentioned earlier, I broke it down because I knew I was this type of person that I wanted to show myself, you know, love. I wanted to um, give myself grace when I don't move as fast as others, or even when a stumbling block rolls into my path. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I would always break things down into bite size, actionable initiatives. Mm -hmm. Right. So for example, and I'll give you this example, when I received a revelation that my, my, my health was starting to deteriorate, and, and the revelation said, you need to lose weight. The revelation said, you need to stop eating meat protein. It took me four years to do this, right? I, for, from my perspective, I just could not imagine my life without broiled flank steaks, <laughs> grilled chicken or seafood, right? What is your blood type? Do you know? Yeah, I do know. I'll share it with you later, but you know, I, I'll share it with you later, but I, you know, I spent like 38 years of being a carnivore and, and just like that, I had to pursue a plant-based life. That was hard. I bet it was, but you did a really good job with that though, because yeah. I, I said, I envy and admire you, but I started looking for ways to keep my same diet and to live. <laughs> And to live my plant-based life through meat. Yeah, I mean, you, <laughs> through meat. You are a fool. <laughs> How you gonna say through meat? Oh my goodness! And it, first off, no, don't edit that. I'm not, That's I'm not. That's, <laughs> that is, I'm living my plant-based life through you. People live vicariously through. <laughs> other people you live my live vicariously through their um through their children i'm gonna live vicariously through people who have the eating lifestyle that i wish i could have but i'm not giving up meat anymore um, i love meat. i'm not giving it up yeah, but but right when you ask about blood type right your blood type actually allows me allows to you eat. to be able to eat the way you <laughs> That's do what I was right? tell you. My, so i started looking for ways to justify I can you eat said what? Chicken and beans, like I um poultry, and See, I can't eat beans. I can't yeah. eat beans. So, so that's 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 my blood type. It says that I that I would do well with that. That, but I don't eat any meat. I just I just say you know what? I'm getting rid of all of it, right? Um, because my body needs to heal, and so it needs to be able to process food effectively. And of course, as we know, meat slows down the digestion, right? 
Um, but yeah, so let's talk about the long-term results. You know, we talked about some of the techniques, some of our strategies. What were the long-term results of the techniques or strategies that you implemented that helped you with habit formation? I think the long-term effects uh, for me have been youth um, because um, if you look at uh, the habit of um, working out, the habit of good nutrition, I'm not saying all of my nutrition has been bad. Mm -hmm. um, I have had bursts of reality where I've, I've needed to um, change my food because I'm, I'm cognizant of, and, and my, my awareness comes more from, you know, my profession, right? Like, so I know how to, I, I know how to determine when, you know, oh, you're gaining weight. Some people, they, I, I feel like the people I take care of, I'm like, so wait, so when you got to pound 301, you weren't worried about the 275 pounds before right now. But can I tell you, Tiffany, that is so true. Sometimes you don't realize it. You don't, because that was happening to me during COVID. Listen to this. Uh -huh. I did not know I was gaining weight. And I and I got on my scale every day. How did I not know I was gaining weight? You Let me tell you how I figured out I was gaining weight. You know, when they was making us gown up, put on all the garb and put on the, the, uh, the head, the, um, the hair protectant, put on the goggles. And somebody was like, let me take a picture of you. And they hung all of our pictures up in the office. And I it was so I remember them taking a picture of me. Why I go looking for myself and couldn't find myself? I was like, y'all look at my face. I was like, why wouldn't y'all say that I look Yeah, like you know that's when it got real bad. You I was like, wait. So then that's when I figured out protein. Remember I told you? And I um, started back working out, was doing my protein and I lost all that weight. And then when I came back to work from my, when I took uh, the kid and I to Hawaii, they were like, wow, Bryant, you look great. What did you do? Why are you losing all that weight? I was like, well, y'all shady asses wasn't telling me when I um, was gaining the weight. Now, why y'all so much worried about me losing the weight? Then tell me nothing. Walking around with a moon face. I'm like, what in the world? <laughs> I literally had a moon face. You should have saw this. Because I was so horrified. I had to think about that question. I will. I would let you know from my perspective, I am still waiting to see the fruits of my labor. Oh, you're still waiting? I'm still waiting. It's pretty bad, you know. Um so I'm going to I'm going to share with you. Hold on. I'm going to yeah. bring two components. Because one I want to talk about is as it relates to my condition, you know. And what is the condition, Toya? Because you never will, you're so secretive. Uh, no, I don't know. You know, I told you. I don't think you've heard my story. I've shared it on uh, my Power 77 Unleashed Facebook, but you know, I went to the doctor. I went to see uh, uh, my personal physician. I went to see um, it, who she sent me to get x-rays done. I had an MRI. I had went to a pulmon, uh, pulmonologist. And um, I went to, you know, I had all these tests done. And in addition, they took about, 14 vials of my blood, 14, 14. And I was like, one, why did they take so much of my blood? I have no idea. But when I came back- They don't they, either. Yeah, I, I don't know. They took <laughs> like, That's a lot of blood to take. Um, And they came back and said, oh, I'm in perfect health. Meanwhile, and you can see my body has been deteriorating, right? Um. My body has been deteriorating. My hair turned gray really fast. My legs started deteriorating. Um, you know, I received a revelation that it could be something like ALS or MS. Autoimmune. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's an autoimmune disease. And so, you know, so with my condition, it's just really hard. You know, I don't know what I have. And 
while the doctor said, I'm fine, you know, from my perspective, and I, a, a lot of this was because I changed my diet as well. Um, but, you know, in my efforts to heal myself, I lost a lot of weight. And right now I have slowed down the aging process because I was aging very rapidly. So that's why I say, you know, I'm still waiting to see the fruits of my labor. I say, we'll see, right? Um, because I'm still working on myself. I want to be more defined. I want to be, um, you know, more, I felt more at peace within myself because I'm not quite there yet. It's it's coming, but it's coming slowly. But I am very happy to say that I have been able to see progress. And so yeah. that's that's something for me. As it relates to my business, from a business perspective, you know, I have a six phased approach to my business. Um, oh. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, once again, we talked about it earlier. It's all about breaking down things into digestible initiatives so I don't get overwhelmed. I've been tackling them one by one. And I started it after I got my certified personal training, my my certification. Um, it, it all started there. Um, with the launch of Power 77 Unleashed, my 90-day program. Uh, but I want to go back to the whole idea of breaking down that respective business. And I just wanted to share really where this idea came from. Uh, I had not always been like that. Mm -hmm. I was always this multitasker that handled like a hundred bazillion projects at one time. Okay. Did I do them most effectively? Probably not. Uh, but, you know, there was this Jewish woman. Uh, I Don't say her. anything about Jewish now. No, no, no. You got Kanye on the chopping block. You mentioned a Jew. Oh, I'm, not ye. Ye. I'm not ye. <laughs> you know, Miss Lindo, she was my guiding light. I love uh -huh. her. I, lo I love her to this day, Miss Lindo. But she shared with me, Toya, you are most effective when you treat a project as Tupperware. You know Tupperware, right? The bowls. Yeah. And you have different layers. Yeah. So she said, essentially, place each of the projects that you have. Because I was I, I was a solo worker. I never had like a team behind me. And so it was always, you know, my HR manager and myself. And so I was always given projects. And she said, why don't you try? Because I was like, I, I wanted to finish everything in a timely manner, on time, etc. She said, where I see you most effective is if you can place each project into a Tupperware bowl. Mm -hmm. Open one of the lids and keep the other closed. The others closed. Focus, dive in to that project and get as much done as you potentially could or that you potentially can within that project close the lid, then open the other. And I took that strategy and I use it every day. You know, she basically taught me how to have a more strategic and manageable strategy to multitasking. And may I add, it has been the most effective for me. So I told you I have six phases to my business. Mm -hmm. the, the first phase was Power 77 Unleashed, which I launched uh, a year ago. And I'm already on phase four right? Phase wow. I, I launched the personal training. I launched the skincare line. I did my yoga at the Lasado summer series, which I'm going to continue to do each year. And, How did that go? Oh, I love Tiffany. It was awesome. I have, I have all of my, my um, recordings on my website at www.kinkynotscafe.com. Uh, I only, they're $2 and 50 cents right? To, to take a class. Um, but if you come live to, to see me, um, you know, it's, I prefer that. Uh, and then of course, now I'm launching proactive is the way podcast. And, you know, I have just two more to go. My, my other two is, are to launch my active wear line. And then the other one is a home studio with a snack bar. So when I do my personal training, people come and then, you know, I can not only train them, but, you know, provide them juices and some of my, uh, some, some cuisine uh, that, that I make for myself in order to, to stay or remain healthy. 
All right. So now we are on to the last question. I just have one quick question for you. It's, this is it. I think we're we're almost done here. But can you tell me, do you think it is more difficult to form good habits than to break the bad habits? It's definitely more um, challenging or difficult to um, form new habits, right? Um, I, um, no, it's definitely more difficult to break bad habits. Okay. Um, it should be, it should be easier, um, to develop, um, good habits, but we, we come up with excuses because as I was talking to you previously about, um, about the gym and I got to thinking like, I have, I really have no excuse. I'm making up stuff. Like it's what you're telling yourself ultimately, but, um, I, um, I definitely think that it's um, difficult to break um, bad habits. And the example I want to use is like with smoking. Um, and I reference my patients a lot, but like I have lots of patients who smoke a lot of cigarettes, right? Mm -hmm. Even though they know that it's bad for them, mm -hmm. they know the 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 long term consequence at the end could be the big C, you know, cancer. Mm -hmm. But they still will smoke two and three packs of cigarettes a day or not even cancer but the other big c copd mm -hmm. you gonna end up with some mm -hmm. sort of <laughs> can't breathe and on oxygen carrying around a big old oxygen tank mm -hmm. or not you just mm -hmm. be stuck at home because your oxygen tank is too big to carry around mm -hmm. but um but yeah like no it's a really it's a, I mean, it's so hard for them to break that habit of, mm -hmm. of, um, smoking and, and it just, um, really bewilders me when I get patients like that, that come in to the office and they're, they're, um, I'm like, are you interested in smoking cessation? And I don't use scare tactics because ultimately I want it to be their, I, if they are not committed to making the change and it's just a suggestion from a medical provider to make the change, they're not going to do it. Like that has to be an internal voice that has said, you know what, it's time for you to stop smoking for it to be for people to be successful. But yeah, no, the habit of let's using the habit of smoking as an example, very difficult um, to break because we allow our habits to become so complex for us, mm -hmm. right? We have all these different layers like an onion, right? And you have to start peeling back all these different layers and bad habits evolve over a significant period of time. They do. They do. Um, you, don't even, you don't even think about it, right? Mm -hmm. They become automated and you mm -hmm. don't even think about it. Sometimes they pick up a cigarette and they don't even know why they just picked up that cigarette. Mm -hmm. It's just a, a behavior that is ingrained. And I try to understand that um, from a patient's perspective. I always go, so what is it? Like, do you have an oral fixation? Because some of the studies show like, you know, they have an oral fixation. Some people are uh -huh. in, what is it? The draw. Yeah, there's just the draw. Even, um, I think he gave an example in, in the book about like people with, um, with substance abuse, mm -hmm. how just the idea, like they don't even have to be, anywhere near it or something but he said just the idea of um possibly being able to get the substance gets their dopamine it, it's just just the neuroscience behind um habit formation and what uh calls us to um the habit or keeps us coming back mm. um, is the reward it's the reward yeah the reward yeah, there were a bad habit, but, which which we'll yeah, for, talk about that. Right. But there there's rewards for good habits that keep you coming back too. So it's just the reward, just right. in general, it's just the reward, whatever right. reward you're, you know, you know, or whatever you have attached to to that. So I do ask um, my patients like, what attachment do you have to this? What mm -hmm. reward are you seeing? Because I see uh, in, per in front of me, I see a person with aging skin, with, um, you know, a receding gum line, 
Mm -hmm. uh, with missing teeth or poor, you know, dental hygiene, mm -hmm. you know, I hear lungs that I can't really hear, mm -hmm. you know, and they, they're just very diminished or very dense sounding, coarse sounding lungs, you know, from all the smoking that you're doing. And so to me, that person does, they don't look well. So I know you can't possibly feel well. Mm -hmm. um, so, but yeah, I think that bad, I think that bad habits are, um, harder to break um than forming a, a new habit yeah I, I when I thought about this question I will tell you I struggled with trying to answer it I was like uh -huh. what's interesting though is that I believe from my perspective each one is just equally difficult and primarily because of the mental pr preparation you know that is required to overcome that begrudging feeling of losing an aspect of yourself uh, mm -hmm. one that has become easy to manage and form uh, easy to manage. And you somehow, you, you talked about a reward and you formulated some kind of reward that caused it to become a habit in the first place. Mm -hmm. That's really, I am saying bad habit if you think about it, but in either way, on in, in either case, it just really takes work to change it because you've put a reward on whether it's bad you've put in a reward on on if it's good it it still sometimes take it makes it hard to change it um and if you want to create a sustainable positive habit the reason why it takes work is from my perspective you you have to deconstruct the bad one to create the good one right you have to deconstruct that bad one to create the good one. And so because you are playing this um, uh, deconstruct build, they both, from my perspective, are just really equally difficult. Mm -hmm. um, so that that's that was my thoughts. But guess what? We are going to learn how to create good habits more effectively. We are going to learn how to deconstruct those bad habits more effectively so that we can develop and grow to be more productive uh, within ourselves and hopefully ultimately within society, right? Mm -hmm. Wow, Tiffany, this this has been quite amazing. I, I truly appreciate you taking the time and, and, and providing me your insight. As always, it is uh, top notch. Truly, truly appreciate that. Oh, thank you. Gassing me up. Gas you up. Thanks for talking. To... <laughs> Same. I, 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 I get excited about being able to uh, connect with you. And then our, and, and I, and I joke with myself, our only fan is our mother. <laughs> That's all right. Hey, you, you only have one. Guess what? <laughs> I'm so in tune with it. <laughs> Hey, as long as you have one, that's all that matters. Change as long because that's what we're here to do, right? Right. And, and the information Just touch one person. It touch doesn't even matter. Person. Touch one person. That person will go and touch someone else, right? Yes. And and then it will be a chain, but we don't, we don't, we don't mm -hmm. think about the impact that it has when we start small, which right. is, you know, what we'll learn. Uh, from James Clear when we talk a little bit more about Atomic Habits. Now, before we close everything up, of course, as we share before, we are lovers of music. And to <laughs> off, our first episode on Atomic Habits and prepare our mind for the weeks ahead. Of course, Tiffany has come up with such a lovely composition. Oh, my God. With her song selection. Okay, now, Tiff, so what did you choose? I don't know. It's a big cliche, right? I... <laughs> what was it? <laughs> it's um, Atomic Dog. Okay. Yeah, Atomic Dog by George Clinton. So why did you choose this one? You know, it was really just going to be a play on words because I know there's an instrumental out there. And, you know, I was like singing, trying to think of, you know, words to sing with. <laughs> right. right. So, like, it was just honestly it was just a play on words like um i was driving down the highway and i was just like atomic habit atomic habit and then something was like atomic dog <laughs> like <laughs> that'll work <laughs> that's a good one. 
I because know. when I ran it by a friend and I was like, um, what song selection do you think I picked? Um, this and they're going through all, I mean, just thinking hard. I was like, you don't have to think too hard. And I told them, they're like, well, I would have never thought, why would you do that? <laughs> why would you do Perfect though. I know you you emailed me, you were like atomic dog, and I'd start, I busted out. I was like, this girl. And then you said you had to play on the word, you wanted to play on the words. And I was like, come on. You know, honestly, even if you think about the words, uh huh. It's like Tiffany. No, this is awesome because it is so relevant. And mm -hmm. I know George Clinton is still living, so you can correct me if I'm so wrong. But within it, in the words, in the in his choice selection, he even questions in this particular song. He talks about his behavior. You know, he's like, "Why must I chase the cat?" Right? <laughs> oh, in me now. Now <laughs> I was thinking. I was like, "Now what?" talking about and literally you have to watch the video in order to understand right right to make the connection i was like is he talking about pom pom and i'll let y'all figure that one out <laughs> or is he talking about competing you know is he talking about this drive that we have to compete and you know this this internal instinct that we have to either compete or mate with someone right I think there's some Clinton cliff notes out there, though, on the song somewhere. Yeah, we don't have to invite him onto this podcast, you know. Oh. Are you, you know, is, is, is this about your animalistic nature, you know, that exists within us all? Because we all have it, right? And one that is innate and, and uncontrollable. And I was thinking at the end, I said, you know, it's interesting because he shows the guy really going back to doing what he was doing when it first started, playing that game, looking at the ladies, et cetera. And he said, it's just the dog in me, right? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, Tiffany, this is so relevant because instead of fixing his habit, he leans on that whole notion that it can't be changed. And as such, I'm going to continue being a dog, right? <laughs> <laughs> so perfect, perfect selection. I can't wait till you get to hear mine uh, next week. It's a bit sad. But, oh, God. Yeah, it's, it's a good one. No, it's a good one. I think you'll like it. All right, now. Thank you all so much for joining us. Please join us in two weeks as we continue our conversations about getting our mind loaded and ready. We will dive deeper into the state of the mind and how do we increase our capability to develop good habits more effectively and break bad habits as we break down some of the highlights in James Clear's book, Atomic Habits. We look forward to you joining us and in preparation for our discussions, we have included in the description where you can pick up a copy of the book. To access all replays or learn more about Kinky Knots Cafes, Proactive is the way, please visit www.kinkyknotscafe.com. Proactive is the way, my friends. Take good care.